Hi, and welcome to the video on edema. So we're going to talk about edema. 60% of our lean body weight is water. So 60% of you, of your weight is water. And two thirds of that water is inside, inside cells. And about one third is outside cells in the interstitial space, in the extracellular matrix, within the extracellular matrix, and some other places, and joint cavities and stuff. But it's in, but so two thirds of it's inside cells, the other third's outside with about 5% in blood. So your body has a lot of water inside of it. And edema is accumulation of water outside of cells into the tissues. And there are some names for each case. So when water, or yeah, when water accumulates in certain cavities of the body, there's certain names for it. So for example, if water accumulates in the thorax or in your chest, we call it hydrothorax. If water accumulates in the inside the pericardium, you have your heart here, and then you have this little sac that's around it around this heart and there's usually muc kind of a mucusy fluid uh, fluidy substance in here to reduce friction because the heart is constantly pumping in and out pump 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 um, to reduce friction so when you get water inside this pericardial sac here it's called hydropericardium when you get water inside your your abdominal cavity or your peritoneal cavity it's it's called hydroperitoneum and now it's usually called ascites and when you have anasarca this is swelling just swelling all over just think of it as swelling all over with the a and a uh, swelling all over is just uh, this uh, you know systemic swelling and in previous videos we talked about inflammation which can be a major cause of edema and that's usually called by that's usually caused by vascular vascular permeability so if we do so that's inflammation and we've already talked about that in in great depth but if there's there's also a classification of non-inflammation and there's a whole class of non-inflammation categories that causes edema. And what are those? There's several main categories of this non-inflammatory edema. And they are one, increased hydrostatic pressure. And here's some examples of that. Two, is reduced plasma osmotic pressure or hypoproteinemia, which means there's low, this means low, protein obviously and anemia is in blood so there's low protein in the blood three is lymphatic obstruction four is sodium retention and five we talked about is inflammation and that those are examples of the inf inflammatory process of edema but these four are non-inflammatory we were going to talk about those but first we need to discuss what is hydrostatic pressure Hydrostatic pressure is, is, is simply, let's say, see if I can explain this here. If we have an artery here and there's water inside of it, there's a certain concentration, a certain amount of, of water, and this water exerts, uh, you know, this blood exerts a certain pressure on this wall, pushing it out. At the same time, this wall, you know, with its smooth muscle, um, and everything it exerts a pressure back against this blood you know if I had let me just draw a box here if I had if I had a scale here a scale inside this box if this was some kind of scale and then I had this water just just here how much weight or how much pressure how much would this scale read maybe 10 pounds or whatever. That's hydrostatic pressure. Is hydro is water, static is just it's not moving and pressure. 
due to gravity because this water, gravity is going to try to pull this water down and that's what this scale is going to read. It's the same thing analogous to, to the blood vessels usually is this, this blood is exerting a pressure you know, due to the heart pumping it through as a, as a different, as a pressure exerting on these walls. Now, if, if for some reason this pressure was to increase, so if I had increased pressure, increased pressure within this blood vessel wall, some of this fluid might start leaking out or overcome you know these little cell walls here these little endothelial cells these little um, you know connections between these cells if the pressure is too much it might you know slip out from under here if it over if it overcomes a certain threshold by which these cells can handle and it might do that just as a defense mechanism too so it doesn't injure the cell but some of the examples of increased hydrostatic pressure are in impaired venous return. Say if I had a heart here, you know, you have the aorta, which is takes blood away from heart. You have the aorta, um, which takes blood away from the heart, and then you have these veins these veins that bring blood back into the heart. This is a simplistic diagram. I'm not drawing all the chambers of the heart and all everything, the superior and inferior vena cava, all that, but I'm just trying to get the general concept down is that when you have veins coming into the heart, bringing, black, bringing back blood to the heart, the heart is like this pump and will pump blood out to all the tissues. So if I have, let's say, this is blocked here. Let's say, for example, I block this tube or I, or I pinch it down to like 25, only 25% 25 blood flow return. Well, what's going to happen with all this blood that's getting pumped around here? It's going to start backing up. Blood is backing, backing up. And what do you think that's doing to these, these vessels here? What do you think it's going to do to this vessel? Well, if you got more blood in a vessel, you're going to increase the pressure. And that's going to cause edema to start leaking out. This water substance is going to start leaking out into the tissues. So impaired venous return, some examples are congestive heart failure, constrictive pericarditis, ascites uh, caused by liver cirrhosis. Um, you can also have... Um, venous obstruction or compression the same type down in down in the legs here if this is a this is a a person and down in the legs here if there is um, some kind of venous problem like a venous obstruction or compression let's say he gets a blood clot here let's say this is a a vein here and there's a blood clot that forms and it stops right there in his leg then that's going to cause that's going to cause a backflow of blood. This blood's going to stop and say, "Oh, I can't get through this pipe," and so it's going to start causing a larger blood. It's going to increase the pressure because the arteries are still trying to pump blood up through this uh, the vein here, and water's going to start leaking out into these tissues. Not outside the body, but you know what I mean. Is leak up back inside the tissues. And some examples of that is a thrombus, external pressure like a mass. If you lay something on a tourniquet, for example, a tourniquet is going to cause external pressure, cause black backflow of blood. Um, lower extremity inactivity with prolonged dependency. So if people stand on their legs a lot, you, you're not moving your legs like people that lay in bed, like in hospital beds, and they don't use their legs, they don't move around. They can form blood clots within their, in their veins. And then you have arterial dilatation. So at the same right on the aorta side or the arterial side of things, if you have heat, a lot of times um, some physical therapists, chiropractors, massage therapists, they use heat, uh, physical medicine people, they use heat to increase blood flow to certain areas that are damaged to certain tissues. So heat, it will be a good 
a good way to increase the blood flow because you're increasing, it causes vasodilation, which causes these blood vessels to come out so more blood can come into the area. And you can also have a neural humoral dysregulation. So, uh, you know, these major artery, arteries and, and they have uh, smooth muscle around them. They have smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. And the nerve, some parts of the nervous system controls um, the tone of this muscle. And depending on this uh, nervous system and the and the the hormones within the body can can cause some kind of uh, dysregulation here, like Raynaud's phenomenon or different conditions that that kind of mess up the tone of this smooth muscle muscle causing it to either vasodilate or vasoconstrict. So that's kind of increased hydrostatic pressure and in some of the causes of edema.